Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. Today I'm going to talk all about exosomes. It's the last part of my series on everything you can do to stimulate collagen production. So I will make it super simple to understand. It is very hyped up right now in the research community and it's exploding in aesthetics. So I want you to understand exactly what exosomes are before you decide if you wanna try them or not. And we'll, before I get started, please uh, like this video, feel free to subscribe, hit the notification bell and share with your friends. Okay, so what are exosomes? Exosomes are actually not a new thing. They were discovered about 25 years ago and they were for a long time thought to be just waste products that cells were just throwing out these little vesicles or these bubbles because they were waste products. And research has shown that they're actually very pivotal in what cells do and how they communicate with one another. So what they are, are tiny little vesicles, extracellular vesicles, or little bubbles. You can literally think of little bubbles that kind of bulge out of a cell and then get released, almost like blowing bubbles through a bubble wand. And as they get released, they float away. And within them, they have different types of um, ingredients that reflect their mother cell, the cell that they came from. And they're extremely tiny. They're typically about 30 to 100 nanogram, nanometers in size, and the largest they get is 1.5 micrometers. So to put that in proportions, if you imagine you have a house, and in that house you have a few suitcases, those suitcases are a great analogy for exosomes. You will put in those suitcases whatever you want to, and then you can ship those suitcases off or packages that will be you know, carried somewhere else to the delivery address that you address the, the packages to. And that's essentially how exosomes work. So within them, they have the messages sent from the original cell. And usually what's in there are lipoproteins, which are a type of protein, peptides like growth factors, and they also carry microRNA, messenger RNA, and sometimes even a double-stranded DNA. So they carry genetic codes and also just the translation of the codes that can immediately set up factories and start producing whatever the messenger RNA codes for, so whatever protein the mRNA codes for. So why do cells even release them? Cells, almost all the cells in the body release them and they can be found in just about everywhere. They can be found in our tissues, in our fluids, blood, urine, you name it. So we're filled with exosomes and they serve as um, a way of cells to communicate with one another and a way to send plans. So you can sort of think of them as project managers that carry blueprints and all of the um, supplies or ingredients needed to carry out their certain function. So when it comes to collagen and the skin, they are usually carrying things that help wound healing, growth factors, collagen stimulation. So things that will stimulate fibroblasts to turn on and help close a wound and heal a wound as quickly as possible, as efficiently as possible, and really efficiently form a new collagen, thereby create thicker dermis and healthier looking skin. To give you some other examples, when the, the cells ship off this, these cargo packages, they can act like shuttles and they can help with clearing out debris, so waste management. They can also help in the, cl uh, in the clotting process when there's a, an injury and there's bleeding. So they have so many different functions depending on what their origin is. Um, not to be confused with stem cells. So for example, for wound healing in the skin, 
we don't need uh, stem cell exosomes. Dermal uh, fibroblast exosomes are all that we need. Some of the exosomes act like shuttles and some of them are just scouts. Like I mentioned cytokines in the last video, they're literally floating around and they're looking for injury and they're attracted to injury and inflammation. So if they sense there's an area of infection or inflammation or injury, they get attracted to that area, they release all of, they basically attach to the cells and inside the cells, they release all their contents. And that, if you can think of, that puts those cells kind of like a car going into turbo. It's got more of the tools it needs. It's got more of those um, messenger RNA strands that are gonna produce more factories making the necessary proteins and peptides that are needed. So basically it's like these cells become super cells and they start producing all the things necessary to heal the wound. In the case of an actual wound, or if you've had microneedling or resurfacing laser, anything that will injure the skin will result um, with additional exosomes will result in speedier, quicker, more efficient and robust healing and more and more and more efficient collagen production. So when exosomes are designed for aesthetics or for dermal injury, they're created in a certain way. The way exosomes are obtained in a lab is cells live in a culture and those cells can be fibroblasts. So there are skin cells that naturally produce collagen and keep our skin nice and healthy, or they could be stem cells. And stem cells are just cells that are not differentiated, meaning they haven't decided yet what they want to be and they have the potential to turn into any kind of cell. It, they could turn into skin, liver, heart, whatever. They are literally just a generic cell that has the potential to be anything. So those kinds of cells can be used and they live in a medium and the exosomes are extracted from that medium. Now, this has so many applications other than aesthetics, which I'll talk about in a minute. But I want to say that when uh, different companies are preparing these exosomes, let's say for wound healing purposes, they will often sell them in vials and some are in liquid form and some are freeze dried, so liquid has to be added. Generally, the ones that come in liquid form are the most potent because a lot of proteins can be lost in the freezer drying process, but there's other things added to those vials that can help. For example, um, so they can have uh, 300, you know, over 300 growth factors in the exosomes, but they can add other things like vitamin B5 or Alantuan. They can add other vitamins. They can add green tea extract. They can add all kinds of things that help in the you know wound healing process or healthy skin all the kind of the the ingredients that skin needs to be healthy so they pack the exosomes in there and fill them with all the things that the exosome might need to really optimize perfect beautiful wound healing and resulting in optimal skin essentially you can think of them as a speedier way to reduce inflammation increase the speed of healing and get your results much, much quicker. So in other words, using them reduces your downtime and optimizes the results of your treatment. Another big area of research with exosomes is actually to do with cancer and in cancer therapies. The research I read about um, was mice with lung cancer and they took exosomes. So obviously the exosomes are gonna signal for the cancer and they filled the exosomes with chemotherapeutic drugs. And they found that using the exosomes, there was 50% more chemotherapy at the tumor site than without. So I thought that was really interesting. Another interesting thing I read is that exosomes seem to work across species. So uh, another research project I read about is they took exosomes from the cells uh, within our mouth and they found that the exosomes accelerated wound healing in 
uh, rat wounds. So they applied the exosomes, the human exosomes to rats and it sped up healing. So that's also, I thought that was really interesting. And the last part that I wanna mention because you will hear about whether they're FDA approved or not approved and there is some confusion about it. So I wanna do my best to help you understand. Um, and it's a fact that different forms of unproven exosomes have been marketed in the US for a wide variety of health conditions, but by various clinics and firms without authorization by the FDA. Now the catch is, if these exosomes are injected, then that's a biologic. And if it's a biologic, it needs to be FDA approved. There are no exosomes currently approved by the FDA. If an exosome is used topically, that is not considered a biologic and doesn't need FDA approval. So it depends on how these exosomes are classified, which determines whether they need FDA clearance or not. So currently none are FDA approved. And if they're used topically, I don't think that the FDA even cares because it's not in that category of biologics. That's the most exciting, innovative, and expensive um, ad additional treatment that is emerging. And in aesthetics, it is something that you would add on to your treatment. So now that I've told you everything about exosomes, what I really want to know is what you think. Is this something you've tried? Is it something you'd be willing to try? Would you add it on to a service to shorten your downtime? Let me know your thoughts and I'll see you guys in the next video.